Hello, everybody. Yeah, I suppose you're wondering why I'm going to do a video about a cupboard. Um, but it's kind of about a lot more than that. Uh, I wanted to do this because I was thinking the other day about something that someone said to me way back in year one uh, of my uh, beginnings of hobbying. Uh, they said something about how you need to find a space, like a permanent space for your hobby, a permanent place for your painting and your crafting to live. Because if you, the theory goes anyway, or their theory goes, that if you've got to get up and go to like four or five different cupboards uh, to get what you need to do a bit of hobbying, and then you've maybe got to sit somewhere a little bit awkward, that just makes everything a, a little less likely to happen you think if you know if you're ever going to do some exercise once you're into it <laughs> and you, you've started it it's always easier isn't it it's always the, the getting ready and, and sitting down and getting through the little faff before you get going that's the difficult bit that puts you off like anything really uh, and so if you've got a dedicated space then that makes all the difference and so I listened to this person's advice and I started to look around at places where I could get or an easy way of getting a small but dedicated place to do all my painting and building and stuff like that because we don't have a, a spare room as such, and probably never will do really, realistically, where I can just dedicate that entire room to hobbying. Um, so I thought, well, what are my options? I could get a desk, uh, could get, uh, you know, a, a more complicated tray, maybe. Because before this baby, I was either on, you know, the kitchen table, or I was literally just sitting down on a sofa with a tray on my lap which is awkward, uh, and I got fed up with it. And then I came across this. Okay, so this is a bureau, and it's been my sanctuary for the last couple of years. It's like a little uh, Aladdin's cave in a piece of furniture, basically. Uh, and a bureau, if you don't know what that is, is an old style piece of furniture which people used to own when people used to communicate through the magical medium of writing letters. And I'll show you a bit about that in a minute. But it's originally designed to be a kind of fold down writing desk. Um, that's what its original purpose was. And I think this is a good, well, it's a good hundred years old. This is probably older. It wasn't very expensive. It's off eBay. It was a couple of hundred quid. Somebody's repainted it, put some new knobs on the front. That's all they've done with it and flogged it off. Um, I don't think it's expensive wood. Uh, it's heavy, but it's it's hardwood, but it's nothing it's nothing fancy. Um, and it was two hundred quid that somebody had painted and stuck on eBay. Happy days. So, without further ado, I'll open it up and we'll uh, have a little look around at how I've organised it, and I'll explain why this has been so important to me. So, first thing you'll notice is it's got a lock on it, which is very useful when you've got small children in the house and you've got a cabinet full of paint and metal. Um, if you've got a two-year-old in particular, uh, as is now nearly, that two-year-old is now nearly four, but she was two when we bought this. Uh, it's a good idea to, to lock things up. Uh, and it's just going to fold down like this, so uh, simple, and like that. And all of these bureau style things tend to fold down like this, into what was a writing desk. And it's now um, my little, uh, factory in one little place so I'll go around and have set this up so get the old light on so I use a little um, swan neck daylight lamp to light my space uh, and I'll just take you around what this all actually is so when this was being used for its original purpose um, these sort of vertical wooden slats here would be where you kept all your letters and envelopes uh, and you know you'd have them sorted into stuff that's arrived for you and stuff that you're writing and other bits and pieces and it would all sort of sit like these sheets i've got here sort of sit upright and then you'd have these drawers would be for things like your ink and your pens and things and you'd put other bits and pieces like a tray with some stamps in these bits and I've repurposed it all as you can see some of it works well some of it's a bit fiddly but it generally works okay um, but the beauty of it is that it just looks like a piece of furniture from the outside 
uh, and it's only when you open it up that you see the sort of organised hobby chaos within. And if you live with somebody like a partner um, or uh, housemates or whoever, or kids, little kids, um, who, who couldn't really give monkeys about the uh, uh, where your hobby space goes and they just don't want it cluttering up the place and making a mess, it's a perfect way of just containing it within one piece of furniture. There's other benefits to having it fairly small, I'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but just going through here, this is how I've set it up. So I've re sort of I've dedicated all these little fancy little slots and drawers and things um, into different places. So this is about 90% of all the paint I own in front of you. I don't own any more than this. To some people it looks like a lot, to sort of other people it doesn't look that much, you know, depends depends how much of a painting nut you are. Um, but Vallejo is my the bulk of my collection, I suppose, and it goes in these drawers. Now, the first thing I noticed, which was something I was hoping, having looked at the pictures on the internet, is that the paints would just sit in these drawers and then I'd be able to push them in. No chance. Um, but it doesn't really matter too much because I just sit them out like this and stick the Vallejos in either side. Um, and then the recesses behind these Vallejo trays have got um, unpainted metal in. So anything that's metal that's unpainted tends to sit in there. Um, because I can lock it up in here. The drawers below don't lock, only the cupboard, the top bit locks. So that keeps the metal miniatures away from uh, kids that might swallow them. Um, and same on this side, just some random, like, like random bits of metal I'm never gonna paint. Don't even know what some of that is. It's just a safe place for the metal, basically. So that's what I do with the paints. And then just going around, you know, it's fairly obvious, but up here I've got washes and um, Wargames Foundry and Games Workshop paints. Um, I keep this handy little gap at the top here is where I keep the cutting mat that I use to paint and sit stuff on. So that can sit there. Um, and then this little tray is like um, cutting bits. So that's where I keep the sprue cutter, craft knives, stuff that cuts stuff and bits of spare glue. Then this central fancy looking bit in the middle is I've put all my uh, scale 75 paints so the bulk of what I've got is Vallejo scale 75 and I bought all of this lot of scale 75 in one job lot for about 80 quid uh, about a year ago which is a really good deal actually um, and I've arranged them so they just keep the, the kind of pressure in between them stacked up like that it just keeps them all together uh, and they don't fall out if you want to take one out and uh, Use it. They, they they sort of stick themselves together. The the pressure and the weight between them just keeps them together. If you obviously if you're going to take two side by side, then they have to drop down a bit. But generally speaking, works fine. Um, then over here, I've just put all the paintbrushes on their side that I've got in one slat like that. All of this stuff is um, collections of you know flags, paint charts, bits and pieces. Red Things a Painting Diary, which I know sounds really fancy, and I thought people that used painting diaries were mad. Then I started to use one, I realised it was actually really useful. That's probably a whole other video. Uh, and over here we've just got um, mediums, which if you don't know what that is, it's various stuff that you can add to paint to make it do different things. Um, again, they don't quite fit in that slot, which is annoying, but it, it works kind of well. Um, so that's the top bit. Um, and then here, um, this is obviously the deck if you like, these are the, the bits of a retinue I'm painting up at the minute towards the roses. Um, and then you know whatever I'm going to paint next is sat at the back there. Um, the rest of the retinue is on a tray over there, this isn't all of them, but you know that's the main stuff I'm painting at the moment. And I'll just take you down to the rest of it, show you how this works. So, fold that back up. You know, suddenly I'm not invading the room again. It's great. Um, going down to the drawers. Um, this is basically arranged so that that is mainly basing. Um, I've been taking basing quite seriously now for about a year. I've been putting a lot more effort into it. So this is where I keep all my mud and static grass. A few gaming bits, bits of dice and stuff in there as well. Um, flock. Um, Tufts and stuff all together in there. Oh, this is a cool thing I've discovered recently. Little trays that are meant for fly fishing, bits and pieces. They're like 50p from somewhere like Boys or Wilco's or wherever. 
started keeping little um, useful spares out of plastics in there and you know other bits of metal that are, are left over from kits to kit bash with so you can find everything easy in there um, going down to draw number two is where I keep kind of other bits like there's stuff for video and lighting in here um, that's where I keep a light spare light and things and then the bottom is a slightly bigger mishmash um, bottom is where I keep unpainted stuff so the, the the sort of major stuff I'm going to paint next I'm surprised I know there's a bottle of box of um, Perry Wars Roses plastics in there and there's some random stuff in there too like some sprues and bits and pieces some empty boxes that might come in handy so that's kind of like the residual stuff in there a few metals in there which we're going to be painting next as well so that's like unpainted stuff in the bottom um, so that is the grand tour um, and I suppose the reason I wanted to show people is because it's been a massive game changer for me since I sort of bit the bullet and said no more kitchen table no more trays I need to do something but I don't want to take over the entire house and this has been the perfect solution and there are loads of battered up old bureaus like this knocking around on eBay um, at one time you know it was the kind of thing you'd see in lots of sort of aspiring grandparents houses in the UK would have a bureau of some kind of very fashionable you know for in the middle of the 20th century you know uh, my grandparents who didn't have a lot of cash even had one you know for Christmas cards and things to sit out and do do writing at and they've got a great new purpose now in my opinion you can do all sorts with them with great little hobby spaces uh, and just having a place to dedicate um, what I do uh, Ian has been, been fantastic because as you can see everything's at, in reach everything's reasonably organised and I know that this will annoy some people <laughs> because they just don't you know they don't organise their paints in this way and they, they, they're sort of like a bit more cluttered with it which is obviously absolutely fine this is just the way I keep it um, it is not quite normally as clean as this I have given it a wipe down because the top there was getting covered in basing material and all sorts of crap basically so I did at least get rid of that before I did this but yes it is generally normally this tidy and organised I'm afraid um, just because it's just so quick and easy to get going and find anything you know, I pretty much never lose anything and that's the other thing about being so self-contained uh, you know because I've got a good but limited space it means I can't buy one million paints which I would do if you let me you know um, and I would like buy one million pointless bits of terrain and basic material if you let me but I try and keep it all in here obviously this is where I keep my painted miniatures there in a cupboard and all the terrains in a cupboard at the other end of the house uh, that all sits together in a different different cupboard but for the the general day-to-day -day hobby and and the bits and pieces uh, this is where everything lives within arm's length and it is great it's like a little meditation center so if you're thinking about you know okay I'm never gonna have a room or a space uh, that seems a long way away or a really big jump for me to do that maybe you're sort of like getting to the point where you're thinking oh, I need to do something more than a tray or a spare table I'm telling you get on there and find out if you can find a, a battered old bureau and you know maybe someone's done what these people did and painted it up and you know they've, they've sorted it out for you then it's been an absolute godsend um, tell me about what your hobby space is like because I always like knowing you know how people arrange themselves and like any other little tips that other people have picked up you know if you're lucky enough to have a room tell us about tell me about it in the comments if you've got a space tell me about it you know um, or if you've got a particular piece of furniture that's cool that's useful that you found as well let me know it fascinates me how people um, sort of organize themselves and, and the way they do it and uh, since I've had everything at arm's length game changer anyway hope you found that uh, weird little tour interesting um, catch you soon bye for now